so here I'm providing some um, information about the, the, or the origin of Hamas economics and uh, the history behind it. Uh, we all know that Hamas economics is a branch of health economics. Uh, which is itself a subdiscipline of field of uh, economics. So there's many definition for formal economics. Um, the main one is the it could be defined as description and analysis of the cost of drug therapy to healthcare systems and society. So where the uh, formal economics actually where they do they try to identify and measure and compare different. Uh, costs for different treatments and also take into consideration the consequences of using these two um, uh, compared medications. So the history of pharmac economics, um, I would say a lot of pharmac uh, economics experts say that is, it's, I mean, it considered to be young uh, into the civil and science, um, but actually the methodology, the analysis that we are using in pharmac economics and health economics I've been using a while ago, uh, over 100, 100 years ago. So for example, here's the cost benefit, the term of cost benefit. The first publication that included the cost benefit was published in 1917. And the term of cost effectiveness, um, the first publication appeared in 1924. And also for the cost of illness, uh, which appeared in 1924, and then the first cost uh, utilization being used in 1947, and then the budget impact was first uh, been used in 1958, uh, and the cost minimization was the most uh, recent type of analysis being used in 1961. All these uh, the, the dates were, I mean, the this paper all published in health related. So I'm not talking about non healthcare related, which is, I think, uh, will be uh, way beyond that. So the first pharmac economics uh, paper was published in 1970s uh, that showed the methodology for evaluating innovative pharmaceutical services uh, by McGann. And the first time the pharmac economics was mentioned in a public forum was uh, by Ray uh, Townsend, uh, Townsend in um, Canada, uh, one of his presentations. So that's where the, the term of pharmac economics uh, catch on. So why, if there is health economics there, why they come up with pharmac economics itself? So that shows you the importance of this field. Uh, you know, looking back, uh, probably you are aware of the uh, thalidomide tragedy. You know, uh, after that tragedy, a lot of countries uh, set uh, some restrictions uh, or uh, extra or maybe um, intensive regulatory requirements for every drug that before it gets to the market to ensure the safety of that medication before be used by the public. And also this requirements actually has led to um, only few medications can make it successful to the market. Uh, there is a set of six said uh, out of 10,000 a pharmaceutical product discovered in the laboratory, only one or two of those can make it successful to the market. So, you know, uh, taking into consideration the new technology that's being used uh, to develop a new form, advanced form of uh, medications, the company needs actually to make up for the all the loss, you know, trying to take to get something in return. So they will charge more for the medication that make it to the market. Okay. So I think that's one of the reasons, but there's so many reasons for that. Uh, the cost of medicine itself, so when the med medication actually made it to the market, um, you know, the medication could be pretty much expensive because, you know, we're talking about new medications uh, under the patent law, reference of drug therapy, uh, over invasive therapy. Um, also, you know, discovering uh, various off-label use of those medications. So. Uh, this actually could lead to, you know, increase in the in the, the cost of that medication of that particular medication. Uh, when we talk about uh, the the expenditure, the healthcare expenditure, the majority of healthcare expenditure is related to the pharmaceutical um, products themselves. You know, uh, out, you know, seventy percent of the intervention 
that um, you know uh, the patient gets is actually uh, pharmaceutical. So that's why uh, the, the key actually to focus on the pharmaceutical rather to if you if you want to decrease the cost of the healthcare or uh, decrease the spending in the healthcare. The healthcare spending is there's parts related to the pharmaceutical product. There's other parts actually related to the uh, the system, to a patient related, environment related, uh, technology related. So you know um, the increased life expectancy uh, led to uh, you know people live longer. The uh, you know they could suffer from many chronic conditions. They may, they may use more medications. And Increased technology, same thing here. So increased technology could, we use technology to uh, develop or discover new medications um, that could be expensive uh, to treat, maybe for, for example, for real conditions. Uh, increased expect, uh, expectations. Um, uh, also, this uh, well documented in the literature, increased demand in healthcare quality and services. Now people are trying to get more service with high, I mean, high quality uh, in quality and number. Of service, so all that all that happened, but you still we have the healthcare resources are limited. Not all country can afford it, uh, so is the key actually to focus in the that uh, the majority of that spending, which is could be it's related to the pharmaceutical uh, product, to decrease the the healthcare spending. So I had done some uh, search to look up to the to the career opportunities. Um, how the uh, for market economists doing after they get the degree? How uh, what the requirements and all that? So I found this study. It was uh, published in HealthEconomic.com. So they, what they did, they conducted an online survey. They included a uh, 456 uh, respondents uh, with there was a background in pharmaceutical economics or a degree in pharmaceutical economics. Um, and then uh, over 200 organizations from 36 countries. So they did not report the whole results, but I, I would be able to get the demographics. So I found out that the majority of those respond, uh, the respondents, they uh, work as a pharmaceutical and biotechnology company, uh, which is um, represents about like 45.7%. And uh, followed by the consulting company, and then the medical devices company, and managed care insurance and pharmacy benefit organization. So here's to show you the variation in the type of organization that could attract, or maybe they, they are in need for market economics to be within their, their team. Uh, by the way, this study was conducted in 2017. I think this number would change every year, it depends on the the need uh, and the lack of expertise uh, in each country. And I was curious about uh, the the programs uh, that um, uh, that's specific in, in the field of pharmacy economics, uh, and I focused only in the PhD programs, uh, just to see how successful um, these programs are. So there's so many indicators can tell you if that program actually was attractive whether they're um, you know successful or not and I found this interesting study was conducted I believe in 2013 which is the only one study actually uh, or type of study that could uh, conduct this um, uh, survey they uh, have 23 question uh, 23 questions um, they surveyed uh, 32 program directors they asked them a lot of questions. They have included some demographics and, and so on, but they tried to give the information that I care about, which is first, they found that the reputation of faculty research of those people and working in the pharmacy economics is the highest among the other program. And I also found that the uh, collaborative environment with other disciplines were rated also the highest. And the faculty mentoring experience were rated the highest. Also, and student funding opportunities is rated high, which is the most important part. Now that shows you how important this field is, how um, you know the value of this um, the science. So I always get the question 
uh, who should study the pharmacoeconomics? Who really we need him? I mean, we need who kind of people that really we need them to get some information from about the, about the pharmacoeconomics. Uh, pharmacoeconomics. First, I would say I would say the anyone who works in the healthcare decision making. Um, I categorize that into two categories: suppliers of healthcare products, which is you know includes pharmaceutical companies and medical device companies, and also the consumer of healthcare products, which is uh, mainly the healthcare providers and payers. So those people they, they need to get to you know to know at least the basics of market economics. But if they want to perform analysis, then you, they have to go through more intensive training. In pharmacoeconomics. So, how can you become a processing pharmacoeconomist? Uh, um, as long as you have a background or uh, a career background or educational background in the field of uh, economics, healthcare system, policy, and medicine and pharmacy, I think you that you put yourself in the first step. So, all you need to do is you to get a specialized training. Uh, in pharmacoeconomics. Uh, economics. So, I noticed a lot of people who work in, you know, private sector. For example, they they're not willing to let, um, you know, the employees to go out and get a degree in pharmacoeconomics. But they need somebody with background in pharmacoeconomics. So the, what they do, they, I mean, those employees, they try to get, uh, you know, some course, or workshop in the pharmacoeconomics, um, just, you know, to uh, to get just uh, to know, so because they get involved in sometimes in different committees that require them to have some knowledge in in pharmacoeconomics. Um, but let me tell you, in practice, uh, usually pharmacoeconomics, uh, from, um, usually, I mean, if you are conducting a economic evaluation and you are pharmacoeconomics, so it's Rarely you work by yourself. Usually you work with team with different, um, you know, if everyone is expert in his field. Um, so you usually don't work alone. It, it's better actually, it's all team member actually have some background for micro uh, economics. How can you learn to be a consumer for market economic studies? Uh, it's actually, it's, it's very, the simplest way is to get just a single course. Uh, this way you can be able to have, you know, to know what the cost effective um, means, what the cost benefit, um, how to interpret the results of economic evaluation. I think these, a single course or two could be uh, enough for you to be able to interpret the pharmacoeconomic uh, studies. And uh, we see a lot of courses right now. Um, you can reach out, uh, just Google it, pharmacoeconomic courses. You will be uh, find a lot of uh, resources that can uh, help you out. Uh, and here we reach the most important part, which is what the the top career path uh, path for the uh, for you as a pharmacoeconomist. Um, I would say the first uh, work of uh, I mean the first place that you can work in is academia, um, especially when you know, when you are like enjoying doing research, because it's always about research here. Um, and also, if you want to explore more areas in the in the field, uh, I think this is the best way, the best place to go. And um, and also, you could work with the, you know external institutions. Sometimes, you know, the private sector trying here, for example, here in the US, uh, in Saudi Arabia. So the private sector try to reach out to the professors who are expert in the field and the university to work with them. You know, um, um, in certain projects. So you always have the ability of uh, to work with um, uh, everyone you want. Um, it doesn't matter uh, whatever project you're interested in. So there, there is flexibility in the um, in your work. But the problem is uh, there are a limited number of positions available. Um, it depends. Not here in, and in Saudi Arabia, but also um, worldwide. You can work uh, for the government, especially if the government having like centralized healthcare. Uh, what I mean by that, you know, for example, here in Saudi Arabia, like uh, Damage having, they have, you know, 500, 600 hospitals around 
uh, the kingdom, and they, uh, there's a, I mean, they have a lot of planning going on. Uh, there's a lot of resources needs to be planned out right. So here's the, some work you can uh, work on. Also, they, they may work, you may work for them in researching policy in the area of uh, occupational health, for example, or health and safety, uh, or the assessment of uh, applications of uh, med medicine benefits or other support programs. Managed healthcare is another uh, path for you. Uh, there is, uh, I would say, there's a, a the list goes on uh, when you talk to the to that field because you really uh, from economics is very important in managed healthcare in general. So they what they do they actually they may work in some uh, clinical trials to assess the cost of healthcare inf uh, infrastructure. Sometimes. Uh, they get the data and within the, the hospital, within the, the institution to um, to evaluate the healthcare quality and cost associated with it, and also to evaluate the healthcare services uh, provided to the patient uh, in terms of cost. So this is, there's so many ways, there's so many uh, work opportunities you can, you can get involved in when you work in the managed uh, healthcare. The majority of pharmacoeconomics, they all know that it's the pharmaceutical industry. Um, talking about the pharmaceutical and biotechnology companies, um, you what you do actually you 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 set, for example, strategic plan for a specific new medication or new technology, just to you know to maximize the profit of that company. This is the only one uh, rule you do there, but there's a lot of a lot of uh, rules you can you can do in the pharmaceutical industry. International agency, a lot of people didn't know that. International agency, they actually, they lack expertise in the pharmacoeconomics. Uh, I work with, you know, some of them uh, who, um, most of them actually the professors. They work in the World Bank um, with contract one or two years, and then just to get experience. Uh, what the, these agencies, they work in the developing uh, uh, countries or underserved communities to improve the healthcare system. So they propose what they call changes uh, to improve the healthcare experience or training and supporting the healthcare providers. And also they may uh, get contact with the, uh, the contact pharmaceutical industry to get a, some good deal with some medication sometimes just to lower the cost of healthcare in that, in that country. So there's a really good uh, work done by uh, the World Bank. So if you got the opportunity to work there, I think you'll be lucky. Even like one or two years, you will get a great experience. A advising different companies. Uh, I added this category because I noticed that a lot of um, because when you when there's a lack of expertise um, in the field, uh, it's so hard for the institution actually, um, you know, hires full time with a degree of master's or PhD. A, to work for the, for the company, especially if the company is a small or mid-sized uh, company, and also it's very hard to find somebody. So they would they they you know they, they tend to hire consultants uh, to projects, for example, and um, which is which is good. I mean, consultancy work at high demanding outside. Uh, so if you get the chance and you are pretty much confident. And you, you want to work independently. I think the uh, having your own business uh, and consultancy, I think, uh, it's very good choice. It's uh, financially rewarding. Uh, for market jobs, I tried to collect, you know, get a sample of the position names. Uh, I just went to the Google. I found, I, I just I typed uh, for market economics jobs, and I, you know, I get a list. Uh, most of these jobs actually just around the world just and i'm trying to show you the names of those positions that are available for you and uh, this is only a sample I'm, you're talking about five percent uh what i get i mean out of um was actually there so uh most of these jobs require you to have uh, at least uh, experience in pharmacoeconomics uh sometimes they you know some of them just they have they required you to have like master or you know graduate uh, degree uh, somehow. So it depends. The qualification for these positions is different. It depends on the need, you know, how uh, the need of that um, company. 
and the, uh, the availability of the experts in the country. I tried to get some statistics on the thermal economics. Uh, I couldn't find any, seriously, because the the job as a thermal economist, it could be, you know, pharmacists could get the job and somebody from economic background can get the job in thermal economics. Thermal economics is science. Uh, is, I mean, is science not a um, position? Uh, so for mock economics, I showed you here in this slide, uh, they all work, they all for mock economics, but the name of the, of the, of the, um, the position is different. So, but I, I really found really good, I mean, um, good news that uh, in the BLS, which is US Bureau of Labor Statistics, mentioned that the, the job of both pharmacists and economists are expected to increase 14%. From 2012 to 2020, I think this is only related to the U.S. Um, from my experience, I think uh, other um, pharmacoeconomics um, experts agree with me that there is a lack of pharmacoeconomics in the Middle East. Uh, I would say in the developed countries in general over the ten uh, the next ten years. The getting, I mean, getting the right education in pharmacoeconomics. Very good question. I really don't see any standard uh, for the educational path to be a mock economist because I've seen a lot of people, they, you know, they have background, for example, in chemistry, but they have a degree in uh, mock um, uh, economics, or maybe they get a degree in some field, but they have you know, some experience, working experience in mock economics, but they still have you know they, they get the job that the regular promotion service can get but the education i said it's uh it depends but overall i recommend getting the graduate degree in in the in the pharmacy now that will increase the chance of success um the background as i said is not really important um as long as the institution and the, the college is getting a degree from have prepared a very good program where they could, you know, um, accept applicants from different backgrounds, and but still they're gonna have a very good outcome. They get, you know, they're gonna be awarded a PhD or master's degree for um, for market economists who deserve to be really uh, for market economists. So, uh, and the, also the fellowship and internship are available. Uh, for you, if you, um, you know, in, in other countries, I don't think there's fellowship here in Saudi Arabia. I don't really think, but uh, maybe the, uh, maybe, I don't know. So you might ask around. Uh, the common topics, when you get degrees, master's and um, doctoral um, programs, so there's topics. I'm not going to go over in detail because of time, but usually they included some, you know, uh, courses in regulations, some courses in pharmaceutical or microeconomics, um, modeling, quantitative methods, and uh, some health economics. And also very important, which is introduction to pharmacopedemiology. It's also common. Uh, there is no two two programs are similar. They usually they there's variation. It depends on the structure of curriculum in each university. Master programs. This is what I recommend to start with. I think this would give you a uh, very good, um, you know, entry a mid-level position, uh, research positions, position that's actually occupied by people with the PhD holders. But you could get it with your master if you have very good experience, uh, you know, in the pharmaceutical companies or the research organization or maybe the academia. There's some master programs are available online if you're interested, but you really have to study uh, the um, uh, whether the, that program is good for you or not. A uh, an indexer program usually, um, I think it's it's very useful uh, for high scientific or academic position like a college professor. It's usually the program is longer, it's like two to four to five years. Sometimes there's dissertation involved. You actually pick projects in in the field of pharmacoeconomics. And um, 
uh, usually they don't require, I mean, some universities require to have master in pharmacoeconomics to be able to get a PhD in pharmacoeconomics, but uh, there is a lot of university right now, they could, you know, reward both. Uh, for four, like four years or five years long, uh, you get the two years um, a master's, and then if you want to complete, uh, continue for PhD, they can let you complete it. So all with you, with your bachelor degree. And also, there is a postdoctoral programs available if you have doctorate in the uh, other area. And I reached the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you all for listening, and uh, good luck uh, to you all.